Hey guys, today we're gonna paint this nebula. All you need is two colors. You need a regular color that is a soft body. I'm using this magenta. And then a metallic color, and I'm using this golden iridescent bronze. And then you just need two paint brushes, one that's going to be for the wet paint, and then one that's going to be for dry brushing all your textures in. So you just need one, it can be any shape. I'm just using this one. And then a fluffy kind of a mop brush that's gonna stay dry throughout your process. And that's it, so let's get started. All right guys, this is gonna be practice video number three. And second to clouds, the most um, requests I get for learning how to do is uh, the nebula. And it's the same technique and we're just doing it on you know, a black canvas instead. And this one happens to have some texture on it already. And um, I'm gonna do this with this color, the Matisse Flow Magenta. And to get some metallic in there, I'm using this golden iridescent bronze. And then just this Liquitex Basics Yellow. And the same supplies from before this fine mist water sprayer and the mop brush dry and then you can use any other kind of brush you want to do um, the wet part for color application every kind of brush you use is going to give you a different result something like this you can use a little angled brush those are my two favorite if you're doing a huge piece use something bigger um, or a filbert, just whatever you have around really. But the important part is the dry mop brush. So, like all the other ones, just mist your canvas a bit before you get started. Get your brush wet, make sure your paint is on the watery side. And then you can just start making shapes. The watery, the more watery it is, the bigger kind of shapes you're gonna get. And you'll see as you experiment with this that everything you do, you know, changes your result slightly. So you just kinda learn what amount of water you need what amount of paint you need to get the effect you're really looking for. And then once you do, you can pretty much apply it to, you know, any type of element that you want. So because this is pretty wet, I'm gonna leave it for a second so I don't get big blobs. It's not quite what we're going for. I usually do the metallics on top of everything else so that that sheen stays visible. So I'm just gonna go through and start. You're gonna lose little pieces of your brush sometimes. You just gotta pick them out. you start to get edges that you find to be too sharp or too spiky, you just come back on them in the other direction. Like this, if I shove this out a whole bunch and I don't like it, I can just start pulling it back the other direction or down or up just to soften it.
there's little spots that like dry in a way that I don't like. I'll just come back over them with the color that I want. And then the water that goes onto it will move that shape that you didn't like as well. So you can rework it. Kind of reminds me of a carnival. See these shapes down here that just dried into something that I didn't really want. You can just go back over that with, uh, you know, paint and a little water and you'll be able to rework it. That's why I love acrylic.
see like this got too dry here so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of mist and then it becomes pliable again When you have thicker areas of paint like this here and you want to leave a space or you know an area that has a really high contrast and it's not blended out as much just kind of work around those little bits um, kind of getting the stuff around it moved before it dries and then you can come back to that when it's a little bit drier and it'll move less so that you can leave those areas that, that pop a little bit more So then I would come in with the, the metallic, this guy. And this is a pretty runny paint, so it works well for this. This, you want to keep your brush pretty wet. And then decide where you're going to put it. It doesn't really matter. You can do it on the edge of some stuff. With this, I go in and do the movement right away so it doesn't dry in such a thick, sharp line. And add more water you know do it even thinner and then you'll see here it moves a lot more and you cover more space with it it's just thinner I accidentally just flung those three uh, spots and they kind of look good so I'm gonna lean there flung some more. See how I did that now. If you do it really thin too, if you just like keep adding water and you take, you know, the metallic that you're using over top of the other colors, you're still going to be able to see that color. It's just going to have kind of that metallic sheen over it, which is, which is cool too. It's really whatever Whatever the F you want.
So this is a 16 by 20 canvas. And I've been able to get through this entire painting using just one mop brush. Like I said in previous videos, if you, um, you wanna keep this dry the whole time. So if you get to the point where the, the brushes are, or the bristles are sticking together and making, you know, hard chunks, then you wanna switch it out and just put it in the water and, and go onto another one. But with these smaller canvases, the 16 by 20, I've been able to get through this whole thing, like I said, without having to switch brushes to give you an idea. Like on the bigger ones I do, like say a 30 by 40, um, I'm going through probably two to four brushes on a canvas that size in one session. the stars and the way these bronze ones landed on here on accident I like so I'm gonna um, do some more of those but on purpose and that's how you come across like half the stuff that you do when you're making stuff is just by experimenting and you know I'm just getting paint on here and the brush is wet and I'm just gonna like tap it against my finger a couple times And get some stars in there. The way I usually do that is with this handy little tool right here. So I'll take this and kind of dip it in the water just a little bit and then I take a brush and I get it pretty wet and then whatever color of the stars I'm doing, typically white, I'll just dab pretty wet white paint around the whole thing. If you get it too wet, they're going to be like thin and watery. And if you don't get it wet enough, then the uh, pieces that land won't always be perfectly round. And they'll give you some like non-star looking type shapes and you don't want that. So, well, that just happened because there's too much water on here. So I'll deal with that. But what you do is you just stick this thing in here and you spin it slowly and kind of point it toward the area that you want them. And it just looks like nice organic specks of stars. and gives you a pretty consistent result. As with the paintbrush flicking, you can sometimes get some wads on there that you wouldn't want. Grab some TP. Dab that off there. Perfect. Okay, so that's kind of how to do the nebulas. Um, if you have any questions, give them to me in the comments so I know how to answer them next time. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Bye-bye.